In this tutorial, I want to show you how I match 8-bit Sony footage to a movie reference in DaVinci Resolve. We will use a modified ACES workflow to speed up our grade. Let's go! The clip I'm working with is this epic pose in Abandoned Shipwreck. It's shot with the Sony A7 III and with an 8-bit codec. When you shoot in 8-bit codec, you don't, I don't recommend shooting log footage, but hybrid log gamma profiles are just perfect for professional color grading. So this clip is shot on the hybrid log gamma 3 profile, giving us a lot of dynamic range to play around with. I look for a reference clip to match our clip to, from a website called ShotDeck. This is an amazing place to find reference clips for inspiration. Uh, this clip is from the movie Gone Girl, or Gone Girl, how do you pronounce it? I don't know. Which is, which I haven't actually seen this movie, but let's go still. I'm using a color managed workflow called Aces Light. You can learn more about Aces Light and how to match your footage to any movie reference on my free training called Introduction to Advanced Color Grading. The link is below the video in the description and in the end of the video. So let's dive into DaVinci Resolve. In Resolve, bring your footage to the timeline. And to start, we don't need to tweak any of the settings in DaVinci Resolve. We are not using the Resolve's inbuilt color management this time, because Aces Slide gives us more control. Let's bring our reference image to the timeline as well. This is my preferred way to work with references. On the color page, I'm building our node tree as we go, so it's easier for you to follow along. So let's start with color management and let's create the nodes first. We shall transform our footage to ACCCT color space because this color space allows us to color correct our footage like it would be raw. But let's build the rest of the nodes first. In the next node, we will transfer, transform our footage to Rec. 709, the standard for internet delivery. And now, in between these two transform nodes, we are working in Aces CCT color space, and I'll have two parallel nodes to work with exposure and white balance. I'll show the gain, I'll lower the gain of the white balance node down to 20% to make it less sensitive. Okay, now that the nodes are down, let's first add an input device transform LUT to the first node. I'm using my Aces Lite LUT kit that has input device transforms for, uh, for many, many brands and models of cameras, making them all look the same. And I'll choose the corresponding LUT for, uh, for Hybrid Log Gamma 3. Then I'll use the Rex 9 transform in the node, uh, and I'll add one of my many Rex 9 transform LUTs. This one, because it's done based on the official ARRI lock C to Rec. 709 LUT. This will give us a bit of that ARRI lock. I lower the exposure with the offset wheel, because in Aces CCT, this is really accurate for correcting your exposure this way, just like wrong. I'll tweak the white balance while we're at it. Uh, this is done again with the offset wheel. Next, let's apply a film emulation LUT to our grade as well. Um, I'll add a new node and apply one of these many film emulations I have in my Aces Light LUT kit. I'll choose this Fujifilm Neutral and lower the gain to 50%. Next, let's start working with the reference image and let's match our, our clip to it. I'll choose our clip and the reference clip and activate the split screen tool from the drop down menu. I'll choose the select clips option, select the clips option. Now we can see both of them side by side. I'll add a node to add a similar crop to our image as well. To crop your footage, I like to add a square power window, then lower the softness to zero, bring the aspect ratio high and then scale with size. Then connect the nodes alpha to the alpha output. If you don't see this blue dot, then right click and add it here and we guess, guess the crop right on point. Next, I want to make both of our clips black and white, because that allows me to see contrast and exposure better. To do that, I'll make this one node into a shared node. First, unlock it, and then rename it as you want. Then I append the no same shared node to our clip, here. And now, when I desaturate the image with the node, both of our clips are affected, because this is shared node, so it will affect all the clips that it's uh, shared on. Now, I want to match the exposure between these two clips. Offset affects the exposure like raw, gain affects mostly highlights and lift mostly shadows, gain mostly the midtones. Then I'll add a contrast node after the film emulation, I'll bring the white point to the left to match the two windows and shape the curve to match the overall contrast. 
Next, I'm going to use a bit of secret technique here. I'm adding my cameras, I'm adding my cameras dynamic range with an HDR tone mapping technique. This is something they use in landscape photography a lot, and you can use it for videos as well. To do this, I'll make a luma mask about like this, and then use the denoise all the way to 100. This is important. I'll lift the shadows with the black point just a bit and then shape the curve to boost the contrast in the shadows, making them a bit lighter and more visible. Next, I'm working with texture to make our sharp Sony match better with the most likely Auri camera that they used on the reference. So let's add a parallel node to the contrast node and let's open the primary wheels and lower the mid detail to minus 30. Let's select the Luma curve only. Let's create a re reserve reverse, what is it? Reverse S shape to the curve. This will make some of our harshness go away. Now I'll turn off the black and white node to reveal the color for both clips. Now we'll work with the colors. In this case, we only need to work with two techniques, white balance and toning. Uh, these are similar but have different effects on the image. So first, I'll work with the white balance and match the overall white balance with the offset wheel. This is really accurate when we work in ACCCT color space and I'm not trying to make our clip as blue because some of the color comes from the toning technique. So let's do that next. I'll create a parallel node to our contrast node and call it tone. And then with the curves tool, I'll remove red and green from the highlights, leaving our image with a strong blue cast or tone. Now our color is done, but I want to add few simple effects to our clip. First, let's sharpen the image a bit. Then I want to add a glow effect to our footage. I'll add it at the end and search for the effect. And I'll tweak the parameters a bit and this looks good. Next, let's add film grain, which is really important even though it won't even show up after we upload it to YouTube. Search for film grain and then apply. Let's see how does, it, how does the grain look in the reference and now replicate the look on ours. Okay, are we done? Well, I just want to tweak the contrast just a bit. And again, let's replace our crop node with the output blanking just because we can. Uh, okay, we are done. And I think our match is very convincing. Learn more about this workflow we used in this tutorial from this free training or watch this video about the same topic.